Diversification is a protection against ignorance. Great investors like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger and Mark Cuban all say the same. Diversification is for the ignorant or diversification is for idiots. Well then you can call me an idiot. In this video I will explain why, despite what they say, I still diversify and currently own 11 stocks and plan on holding 25 to 30 stocks. Hi, this is Tom from the Dividend Attitude. Today we will talk about diversification, why to diversify, how to diversify, how many stocks to own and why I don't listen to this particular piece of advice from Warren Buffett, among others. At the end I will also show you my portfolio so you can see that I own way more, 11, than the 3 to 4 stocks that Warren Buffett recommended in his famous speech. So now the answer to the question you probably came to this video for. Why does Warren Buffett recommend that you own no more than 3 to 4 businesses that you know really well and why I am not listening to that advice? Investors like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger and Mark Cuban have a severe advantage compared to regular investors like you and me. They will have a better opportunity to get to know the business they are about to invest in. They will probably get the chance to talk with the CEO of that company, get a tour around the company, get to talk to employees etc. They can poke the CEO with relevant questions to see how the business is run and what they are expecting. We as regular investors don't get that chance most of the time. Can you see it happening? I walk into the headquarters of Johnson & Johnson and tell them I want to speak with the CEO. Hi, I'm Tom and I'm considering investing $1000. Can I talk to Alex Korski, the CEO of J&J? Please? Of course they will laugh straight to my face. So we have to deal with second-hand information from annual reports, quarterly earnings, conferences, etc. We don't get to poke around the bear ourselves. Big difference. And even if we would get to poke around the bear, so the CEO, I don't know about you, but I don't even consider myself one hundredth as knowledgeable as Warren Buffett. The man has almost 70 years of experience in investing. I'm not even half that old yet. Another big difference is the time one can allocate to do research. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger and Mark Cuban are all professional investors. That is what they do, so they have a lot more time to do research. And they also have a team to do the research for them. Me, I have a full-time job, a family and this YouTube channel to run and I have no one else to help me. So I don't really have the time to spend as much on researching companies as they do. With that in mind, do I feel like owning just 3 to 4 stocks? If they were my own businesses, sure, because I would know them inside out. But they are not, so no, I would not feel comfortable owning just 3 to 4 stocks. So call me an idiot, but I like to protect myself by diversifying into eventually 25 to 30 stocks. Diversification revolves around risk and asset allocation. The risk of losing your money. You know the don't put all your eggs in one basket phrase, right? That is what diversification is all about. Diversification is basically spreading your money out over more than one basket. The counterpart of diversification is the return on your invested money, because the higher the risk, the higher the potential returns. And the other way around, the lower your risk, the lower your potential returns. Let me clarify that with two extreme examples. In scenario 1, you own only one stock, and you put all your money in Amazon. Yes, I know, not a dividend payer. This is an extreme scenario, so we will assume you timed your purchase very well and bought worth 10,000 of Amazon stock at 41.71 on the 14th of November 2008. That would have given you approximately 239.5 shares. Right now, on the 26th of May 2020, your investment would be worth 235.5 times 2433 approximately. That would be 582,730 or a 5728% increase. That is a lot of money. Yes, of course, you would be half a millionaire. Though, that is with hindsight. Now imagine, Amazon didn't do so well and went to zero. You would have lost your whole investment. And then the other scenario, where next to Amazon you also bought all the stocks in the S&P 500 at equal weights. The S&P 500 was at 873.29 on the 14th of November 2008. So if you bought 501 stocks in total, you would buy 10,000 divided by 501. Is approximately $20 worth of Amazon stock, which would be roughly... 0.48 of a stock of Amazon. The other 9980 you would put in the S&P 500 stocks and that would buy you approximately 11.43 shares of the S&P 500. The end result would be 1168 worth of Amazon stock and 34,451 worth of S&P 500 stocks. Total that is 35,599 or a 
256% increase. That is a big life changing difference. $582,730 or $35,599 in that same time period. However, if Amazon now went to zero, you would still end up with $34,451, only a 3.3% difference to your total return. And that is what diversification does. It spreads out the risk. But with spreading out the risk, as this example clearly shows, the returns are also greatly diminished. The million dollar question then is, how do we find the optimal balance between risk and reward? We will go over that in a bit, so stay tuned. If you liked the video so far, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. It will greatly help me to support my channel and to make more videos like this one. The previous example was about diversification within the stock market. Remember when I was talking about all the eggs in one basket phrase before? Or rather, not to put them in one basket? The stock market or equities are one basket, which is also referred to as an asset class. In a previous example, we showed diversifying your money within that one basket. But through diversification is spreading your money in more baskets, so asset classes. Other asset classes are fixed income vehicles such as bonds, real estate, cash or cash equivalents or commodities, etc. Diversification in different baskets or asset classes is to minimize something that is called systematic or market risk. The thought behind diversification is to find baskets or asset classes that are negatively correlated with each other. Meaning that if one goes up, the other is going down and in reverse. A classic example would be bonds. When stocks go up, bonds usually go down. When stocks go down, bonds usually go up. What this achieves is that the drawdown of your overall portfolio, so the total amount that your portfolio would go down in recessions, is limited by the fact that you also have bonds. This is really at the heart of proper diversification. Within a basket, such as the stock market, this principle also exists. Consumer staples such as Procter & Gamble usually perform poorer during a long uptrend in the market, like we just had, compared to other stocks such as technological stocks like Apple or Microsoft. But when a recession hits, people take flight in safe stocks such as Procter & Gamble causing them to outperform. This is because these stocks have a low correlation to each other. You might think, but wait, Apple and Microsoft are not doing so bad during the current recession. That is correct, the correlation also depends on the cause of the recession. The dot-com and housing bubble each hit different industries particularly hard. And because you can never know the cause of a recession upfront, it is best to diversify among different industries and sectors. More on that in a bit when we talk about how to diversify. The answer to this question will depend on each investor individually. To help you answer that question, ask yourself, how soon will you need the money you invest? How risk tolerant are you? What is your current financial situation? It is usually not a good idea to invest your money in the stock market if you need the money in five years to buy a house, for example. The stock market is a long-term game and a lot can happen in 5 years. Risk tolerance. Do you get nervous when stock market or one of your stocks goes down 3% in a day or 10% in a month or perhaps 30 or 50%? Where's your limit? Be honest to yourself about this. One thing to note is that with diversification in the stock market you reduce the unsystematic risk. The risk that one particular stock or industry goes down. The other systematic risk is the risk that the whole stock market goes down like we are experiencing now. That is not something you can diversify away completely. If I look at myself, I have proven to myself already that my risk tolerance is quite high. How do I know? Because I have been a professional online poker player before for quite a while. Playing poker is like the stock market. Long term it is a winning game, but short term a lot can happen. What about your financial situation? Do you have high interest debt? Do you have an emergency fund? Having debt doesn't mean you shouldn't invest in stock market, but your main focus should be on paying off that debt first. Don't ever put yourself in a situation where you need to withdraw money from your stock portfolio because you were left with no choice. Those moments always come at the worst time, when the market is down. When you know the answer to the questions that we just discussed, it is time to decide on your strategy, how to diversify. Like I mentioned before, the key to this question is correlation. Diversify among different companies, but also different industries and perhaps different countries. Although one could say that the global economy is so interconnected nowadays that diversification among countries is less effective. How many stocks to own and how to diversify? A question most beginning investors will have on their minds. Don't get too excited about the answer to this question though, because as with a lot of things, it depends. 
depends on your risk tolerance, your ability to research and understand companies. Do remember though that diversifying is not an excuse not to do your research and understand the business before you invest in it. If you want to know how to understand the business, I suggest you watch my video called What does Visa do? Not what you think, which is suggested right now in the top right corner. As I mentioned before, the goal of diversifying into different stocks is to reduce the unsystematic risk, the risk that any one of your stocks takes a dive. Modern portfolio theory suggests that you come close to optimal diversification after you have added the 20th stock to your portfolio. James O'Shaughnessy, in his book What Works on Wall Street, suggests holding around 25 stocks. Lowell Miller, from the book Single Best Investment, suggests to hold around 30 stocks. Benjamin Graham, the godfather of value investing, suggested to hold between 15 and 30 stocks. So it varies a bit, but in general it is around 20 to 30 stocks. What is more important though, is that you hold stocks that have as little correlation to each other as possible. So stocks in different industries and sectors. For example, in my portfolio, I hold Qualcomm, which is chip maker, and I hold Northwestern Corporation, which is a utility, and they have a low correlation with each other. A way you can check this out for yourself is with the portfolio visualizer tool. I will put a link to the website in the description. The opposite is also true. If you hold too many stocks, the benefit of diversification goes away. Because with each stock extra you add, the risk doesn't decrease proportionately with the reduction in gains. So what you are effectively doing is reducing your returns with no additional benefits. I currently hold 9 stocks in my Bing Bank portfolio and the value currently stands at 7139 euro. I'm still down about 13.5% and an 1113 euro in 2020. That is a big difference compared to last week where I was still down over 16%. It is still crazy to me that the market is going up while the world economy is in the gutter. Since the start of my portfolio in 2017, return now stands at 27.65% compared to 29.8% of the S&P 500 mini future benchmark. As a dividend growth investor though, my focus is on my passive income coming in. Next week, May will be finished and I will do a more elaborate update on my dividends. But so far, more than $52 have come in this month. There's also been some movement in my Degiro portfolio. The portfolio value now stands at 1169 euro and mainly 3M has gone up in value. SKT also jumped up a bit now that more and more shops are starting to open up again. So how diversified is my own portfolio right now? I own 11 stocks in 8 different sectors. I do need to update my portfolio sheet though to include the real estate sector as well. For those paying attention, SKT is not a financials company. So both SKT as well as OHI would move to the real estate sector. In the pie diagram you can see the weight per sector. The value now stands at $9,171 compared to a cost of $8,742, which is a 4.9% and a $428 change, excluding dividends. Including dividends, the change stands at 13.21% and a $1,154 positive change. This video will be part of a new playlist on stock portfolio management. Do check out my other playlist on how to research different stocks as well if you are interested in that. If you like this video, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and turn the notification bell on to stay updated on my future videos. Next up is a video that will answer the age old question, pay off your debt or invest. Until next time, bye bye.